I now have a DCC++ command station on my model railroad. So let's see how I build it. I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of what you need to do. But first, don't you just love running trains? Just be able to sit there with a wireless throttle. Very inexpensive with DCC++ EX. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own for just about $75. And we'll be going on this journey together. You can see everything on my website, tomstrainofthought.com, in the projects folder, DCC++ EX. Put a smile on your face. The reason why I'm putting this out now is because I'm going to be building a test track in the other room. Because I'm going to be running X-Rail and Track Manager, which is coming up in the next version, version 5. The dev team is working on some of that stuff right now. And Kevin C. Smith said he would let me have a sneak peek at it. So I'll be sharing that with you in future videos so let's get going with this everything that i cover in this video i will go into more detail on this page right here i'll have the link in the description so if you can't catch it all on this video you can always go to the web page and follow along at your convenience here is a quick look at the web page that i built for this to go along with this video everything about dcc plus plus ex in my train room and my experiences and i give you a summary of it what to expect on the page and more i'm going to do another project in the family room where i'm going to set up a test track and that's going to be a little bit later after this one i even put an easy button on there if you think this is too complicated and It'll take you to another page where you could do it without doing any coding. But I give you a brief history of DCC, how I got involved, uh, what I am doing in the present day, the train room operation, where to buy, choosing components, less expensive components and high-end components, train room command station, connecting the devices together, installing the software, upload, power up, test, and finally the throttle connections and if the easy button doesn't work for you there's also a place here if the command station is more than what you want to tackle at the moment but still want to try arduino check out the arduino products i enjoy using and highly recommend right here supporting this channel helps out a lot it takes a lot to put these videos together <laughs> and it takes even more to build these instructions right here since i'm going to be using engine driver on an old cell phone we're going to have wi-fi on this so we're going to have three major components the mega it could be any brand i'm using an arduino right here the motor shield also, I'm using an Arduino brand motor shield on this one. And the Maker Fabs Wi Fi shield. You're also going to need a couple of power supplies to power everything here. And what I'm using here is a 15 volt 3 amp switching power supply. And this is for the motor shield. Now, depending on your scale, if you have a larger scale, you may want to go up higher than 15 volts. Or if you're in N or Z scale, you want to go lower. I'm in an HO scale, so I'm going with 15 volts right here. When I tested the output of the command station, I came up with 14.6 volts on the track. So that's close to where it needs to be. Also, for your Arduino, if you're not hooking it up to your computer, you're going to need a 9 volt wall wart, just like this. This one is 9 volts and 1 amp. 
You will also need a couple of jumpers like these DuPont connectors right here, male to female for your connection for your transmit and receive from the Mega up to the Wi-Fi shield and a barrel connector for the power to plug in to your uh, power supply, which will go in here and a couple of wires for your power for your main track and for your program track right there. The first two terminals are power. The second two are A, they're designated A, and that goes to your main track. And the last two are designated as B, and they go to your program track. You can purchase these barrel connectors in a set. They usually come about 10 sets. Uh, real cheap on Amazon and they work fine like this but what I found was when I was hooking this up into my power supply I wasn't making good contact with this pin right here it's supposed to be a 2.1 millimeter pin but sometimes these are not exactly 2.1 millimeter so they don't fit that well the outside the negative part fits perfect it fits nice and snug but the inside sometimes it does not fit and i was having a bear with it because what i was doing i plugged it in and i was trying to get power on it and i wasn't getting any power and then i i ended up bumping the connection and i seen the lights flicker on the motor shield and i knew ah it's the plug so what i ended up doing was I took one of these that are made for a PC board and soldered the wires right onto it on these two terminals right here. So the one that goes all the way to the back here, that's the one that goes on the pin. That's your positive terminal. This is your negative terminal right here. When using an external power supply, you're going to want to cut the trace between those two solder pads. If you're not comfortable doing that, uh, you can also just take this pin right here that's marked VIN and bend it out of the way and cut it off so it doesn't make contact when you're plugging it into your Arduino. Push them in there all the way down and then you could cut this wire or you could cut this pin right here and then nothing on here you don't have to do, worry about anything on here this one fits right on top but you can see that there's a gap between the two headers on there on both sides that's how you line it up right there this comes with two jumpers on here they're usually across the last two sets of pins on either side you want to take them off and set them off to the side just like that or put them in a safe place where you could find them again because sometimes you'll need those little jumpers like that but in this situation you're not going to need them you're just going to need two wires two dupont connectors male to female and you can see i have I'm on pins 18 and 19 on the mega number 18 is the transmit and number 19 is the receive so 19 is the receive and what you're going to do is put the receive on the transmit on your Wi-Fi shield the transmit is on this side here and the receive is on the opposite side you could put them on any any one of these there's eight channels on here so it doesn't matter which channel you use transmit to receive and receive to transmit we're going to install our power wires i already tinned the wires and placed them in the terminals the ground is toward the end which is your black wire and the red is your positive it should look just like that right there the track power 
we're just going to hook up the main track I'm not going to worry about the program track right now make sure they're nice and snug and then we're just going to set this off to the side right now because now we're going to work on the software to get the software you're going to have to go on to the dccex website the link is in the description and you can find everything on my website latest dccex official release click on that and then you'll want to get the command station ex zip make it easy okay there we go we'll put it on my desktop we put this on the desktop and so we're going to unzip it we're going to extract all we're going to extract it onto the desktop to make it easy and we'll just take a look at it you can see all the files in there and what we're going to do first thing is we're going to take the configure example open it up we're going to make a configure h file out of it <laughs> if you have all these other motor shields in here then you would change the defined motor shield type but we're just going to leave it as the standard motor shield the only thing we need to change is the, the wi-fi parameters and we come down here where it says define Wi-Fi SSID that is your network name you want to put your network name in between the quotes right here and define Wi-Fi password you want to put your password in right here you come up here boom save as change this to configure.h and we'll save it and you'll see there is that file right there that we just saved now what you want to do is go to your arduino folder and normally your arduino folder will be in the program files i put mine on my d drive you can see here's the arduino folder right here i already have the command station ex in there so we're not going to put it in there i'm just going to show you how you would put it in there here's the command station and here's the arduino folder you would just drag it over into your arduino folder <laughs> and copy it in there and that's all you have to do let's open up arduino so we can install this onto our command station you'll want to click on file and open and you can see it's already on the folder command station ex uh, if you're on arduino you'll see it in here command station ex the folder you want to go inside the folder and to the file command station ex it has the little icon for arduino the little infinity symbol so we'll open that up and it opens up the sketch it opens up the project so let's bring it over here we're going to hook up your our command station right here and make sure that we identify it board arduino mega 2560 okay if it shows up something else you just go over here and then choose it from the list down here okay then com port it's already chosen com port 15 okay so what we want to do is we want to upload it and this is going to take just a little bit and let me move this over so you can see right here it says compiling sketch and it is done uploading you see right there it says done uploading so let's open up the serial monitor okay we have power on it right now so what we're going to do is come up to here on the command line 
and type in a one. So those two, uh, I don't know what they're called, <laughs> less than and greater than, the less than and greater than on each side of the one means it's a command. And so it shows power on. And on, you can see the LEDs are lit up. It turns on the main and the program track. Okay, so we'll do a zero. And you'll see it says power off. It shut off the LEDs. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. Let's run some trains. About time. <laughs> We're using engine driver here. We'll open it up. Select DCCEX. Click the three dots. Click power. Push the power button. And select your first locomotive 03. Acquire. Select the one on the left. 8432. Acquire. And there you have it. You're ready to go. Now it's time to run some trains. Okay, we got the lights on. Okay, let's turn the bell. And the other one. There we go. Let's get a good view of this. Now, <laughs> that, that is, is fun. fun. Don't forget, everything and more is on my website that I built specifically for this video and DCC++ EX, which goes into greater detail than what this video does. A lot more detail, believe me. So check it out. And as always, thank you for your continued support. I wouldn't be able to do these without the support I get from all of you, subscribers, patrons and members thank you thank you very much so until the next time we'll see you